An arcade. What is that, you might ask? Is it something I can eat? Well, no. Back in the day, they were a place with tons of game cabinets that people could play all day as long as they had enough quarters. Sadly, in America, they're kind of dying out, with the few that are left becoming dominated by ticket games that allow kids to gamble legally. Those machines just aren't in the spirit of arcades. They're supposed to be a place to play games and have fun, not a place to throw away your money at some cheap dollar store prizes. I'm doing air quotes around prizes. You can't see them, but just imagine they're there for me. But enough complaining, there's good news. Here in Japan, arcades are alive and well. Sure, most of them have rows upon rows of those claw machines, but luckily most of them focus on the games, just the way it ought to be. Many times with these arcades, they'll even be several stories tall, with entire floors dedicated to specific genres, like scrolling shooter games, fighting games, even horse racing games? Yeah, I don't really know about that last one. But it, it seems like it's popular, so I don't know. Now, while I'm a pretty big fan of the fighting game genre like Street Fighter and Skullgirls, my personal favorite area is that of the rhythm games. Now, you've heard of Dance Dance Revolution, I'm sure, and maybe Project Diva if you're a Vocaloid fan, or Taiko no Tatsujin if you play Osu, but right now one of the most popular ones is probably Mai Mai. And there's a reason for that. When I walked into my first Japanese arcade, there it was. Bright and colorful, loud, and a line of people waiting for their turn on the row of four machines, all occupied. For goodness sake, the game looked like a washing machine, and by golly, I wanted to try it. And you know what? That's just what I did. You read the title of this video after all, so today we're going to be taking a look at Mai Mai. We'll be playing Mai Mai Milk, the most recent version of the game that's been dominating all the Sega arcades I've been to lately. Let's put in our coin here. Whoa, 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 okay. That was really freaking loud. It's like the, the machine's announcing to everyone in the arcade, Hey, hey, this guy over here is playing Mai Mai. Come on over and make fun of how bad he is. Come on, Mai Mai Milk, why do you need to be so mean? I'm just trying to discreetly enjoy a few rounds here. Just don't go calling attention to my blonde hair, blue eyes, foreigner butt getting handed to me. That's just rude. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, hold up. You really have been saying my my milk, right? As in cow juice? Calcium? The drink that should be poured into the bowl after the cereal? Yes, that kind of milk. The Taito wasn't... The Taito. The Taito. Taito, that's a game company. The title wasn't a typo, and yes, I have been saying it the whole time. It really is my my milk. As soon as you start up, you'll see the game takes on a very milk bar aesthetic. Don't know what a milk bar is? Well, it's kind of like a bakery, and that'll be pretty obvious by the overall theme. The art style is very rustic, mom-and-pop store feeling, with all the laces, round edges, and soft colors. Well, enough about the aesthetics, how does the game itself work? The process of this game is simple. You pick a waifu, clear songs to make cheese, use the cheese to buy new items, use the items to swag up your little profile card, rinse, and repeat. That's my my milk in a nutshell. As I mentioned before, this is a rhythm game, so it mostly comes down to hitting the right notes in time to the beat. They'll appear in the center of the screen, only to then proceed to one of eight locations, each spaced evenly around the edge of the screen, where you'll find a button. Just slap that button as hard as you can, or tap the screen in that spot, and the note will disappear, adding points to your score and building up your combo, depending on how close to the timing you were. Tapping the screen seems nice in theory, but the buttons just provide that extra little bit of positive feedback for me. Hearing that satisfying snap when pressed, that's just the way I prefer to play, I guess. Try it out both ways and develop your own way. Maybe do buttons and screen tapping both. I can't control you. Now, of course, it gets more complex than just hitting single notes. There are also hold notes in which you must, obviously, hold the button down and release it, both also in time to the beat. This makes it a little more complex, since sometimes you'll be holding with one hand and have to reach over with your one free hand, hit some extra notes or holds. The circular washing machine shape can cause you to get your arms crossed up and all twisted if you're careless, so be careful or you'll lose your combo. The last note type, and possibly the hardest, is the slider, which appears as a star. It'll float to the edge like any other note, at which point you have to hit the button in time to when it hits the edge, but then things get interesting. The star will pause at the edge, a line will appear, and you must follow your hand along the line with the star until it reaches the end of the line. 
This may sound complex, but hopefully having it shown here on screen can explain it better. As mentioned before, MyMy does use a touch screen, so you will need to slide your hand on the actual screen itself. And yes, of course, these sliders must also be done in time to the beat, both when you start moving and when you reach the end of the line. Many times it'll just be a straight line on easier difficulties, but sometimes, and quite often, they'll curve around the edge of the screen or do some crazy loops all over the place. It gets weird. If you were worried about getting your arms all twisted up before, the sliders now make it even harder for you to keep coordinated, as well as making the notes and rhythms harder to read overall. And with that, yes, this game gets brutally challenging. I can mostly only play on expert difficulty, which is the second highest, but it is nothing compared to the most challenging master level stages, which you can see someone playing here. But Brandman, I can hear you asking, if I'm going to play a rhythm game, there needs to be good music. And to that, I say yes, I wholeheartedly agree. A great rhythm game with boring, uninterested music is a bad game, as it needs to feel good to hit the beats in time to make you feel like you're really contributing to the song. Well, not to worry, because nearly every track on here is top-notch. As with many Japanese rhythm games, there are several categories. Anime intros, J-pop, game music, and Vocaloid music are all there, as well as songs specifically made by Sega, as Mai Mai is a Sega-developed game. Yes, this means you can play the legendary Escape from the City from Sonic Adventure 2, and it is glorious. Some of my other favorite tracks are the theme songs from Gakko Gurashi and Himoto Umeru-chan, Jelly by Capsule, Live and Learn from Sonic Adventure 2, Pursuing My True Self and Time to Make History from Persona 4, and Plus Danshi by Riol. Not to mention, one coin lets you play four songs. You'll get a lot of mileage out of just one coin in this game. Also, even if you fail a song, it isn't game over. You can still continue and do your other songs, so don't be afraid to try hard ones and mess up. If you're not into Japanese music or video games, this all might sound like a load of nonsense to you, but if you've played any Sega games, watched any anime, listened to any J-pop, or been on the internet for an extended amount of time, then I can pretty much guarantee there will be a few things you'll recognize. There's a huge song that's spanning all kinds of media formats, so look it up online if you want, you're bound to find something you know. Even if you don't, nearly all the songs are a blast to play, especially the energetic and fast ones, as they're just so exciting to get right. I've found a lot of new music I like through this game, so even if there's nothing you know, there will be definitely something you like, as long as you're not racist towards Japan or something. Anyway, with all that in mind, I have to recommend this game. If you find yourself in Japan, then this is a must play. It's the quintessential rhythm game other than the obvious Dance Dance Revolution, so I would definitely check it out if I were you. However, not everything is bright and shiny, unfortunately. If you're not Japanese, or you don't speak Japanese, there are a few things that may make you think less of the game should you try it. I'm going to do my best here to elaborate on some of these issues, with a solution or explanation that should hopefully help any new players. First off, let's address what you may already have noticed. In the gameplay footage, I was wearing gloves. It wasn't to hide some nasty scars from my youth, it was actually just to help with the slider notes I mentioned before. Because the sliders make you slide your hand across the large touchscreen, the friction can really hurt your hand after a short amount of playtime. It can also make actually successfully completing the slides more difficult because you have to use more force to work against that painful friction. Luckily, the gloves are a very easy solution to this problem as they let you glide across the screen with ease. Avoid using heavy winter gloves as those will make the machine less likely to actually register your input, so instead use lighter gloves. I personally use some touchscreen gloves that I found at a 100 yen store, which is equal to just about a dollar. Gloves are pretty much a requirement to play here, especially if you're going to try harder difficulties, so definitely track some down. Next, I want to mention the queuing. It's obviously going to be different at every arcade, but if all the machines are full, you'll probably see a line or a bench with people waiting to play next. Be courteous, and if someone is waiting when you finish, give up your machine and let them play. If you do want to play again, you also are more than welcome to get in line, and they'll do the same for you when they finish. I've heard some arcades will cue you by having you write your name on a list, and put a check by your name when you had your turn, though I imagine they only do this when it's really busy. If you want to avoid queuing altogether, try going on a weekday when people are likely to be in school or at work and you'll be very likely to have the place to yourself. It's also worth mentioning that the machines are in pairs of two. 
If someone's playing by themselves on one, the other machine in his or her pair will not let you play. Do not go walking up to their machine trying to put your coin in, even if it looks empty. I originally didn't like that about the game, as it seemed like such a waste to have half of the cabinets empty, but in hindsight it makes sense. If someone is playing a different song on the machine directly adjacent to you, things could get unfairly difficult. With that mindset, I actually kind of consider that to be a pretty nice design choice. Of course, if you have a buddy and you both put your coins in and ready up before the game starts, then you can also play multiplayer. There are two modes, Versus and Sync. Versus allows you to each pick your own difficulty and you compete to achieve a higher score than the other. Scores are balanced across difficulties, so it's perfectly possible for someone playing on beginner to beat someone playing on master. I recommend this mode if you're playing with someone at a different skill level than you. As for Sync mode, everyone plays the same difficulty and you all contribute to one total score. If you have other friends who are about as good at the game as you, or you're all new to the game or something, then you can all team up in this mode, so it's pretty fun. In both multiplayer modes though, everyone has to play the same song, so my friend group usually likes to rotate out who picks each song. But because you're playing the same song, you're able to play on adjacent cabinets, so that's nice. They're there for a reason after all. With all that in mind, the multiplayer modes are all pretty fun and worth a try. Just be sure to pick versus or sync mode depending on whether your skills are fairly similar or vastly different. You may remember me mentioning earlier that you use cheese to buy new items. Well, this can include new songs, profile pictures, sound effects for when you hit the notes, and many other things. Some of them can also be unlocked through an achievement system, so that's cool too. You may wonder though, how is this stuff saved? How does it remember the stuff I've bought with my cheese? Well, there's this beautiful thing called an IMA card. It's only 300 yen, a little less than $3, and after you put in your coin, you scan this card on the little IMA panel on the machine, and boom. Now, every time you scan the card in the future, and at any arcade on any machine, your unlocked stuff and high scores will all be there. This card works similarly in many other arcade games too, not just Mai Mai. So it's definitely worth it in my opinion. It even lets you go online when you get home to view videos of your performances. There are little cameras on the machines that record you playing, should you allow them to, which is how I got all of my gameplay footage. Sure, the quality may be a little low, but you can't really screen record an arcade machine the way you would a game at home, so hopefully it did well enough. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It is a little different from what I normally do, but since I'm in Japan right now, I wanted to make something that I can only really do while I'm physically here. And I make a joke here about Logan Paul's behavior, but I feel like that's been done to death and a little outdated at this point. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Not broken, not broken, we're good, we're good. Ooh, hey, come on! I'm trying to do a funny bit. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do a silly. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, thank you. Thank you for staying on this time.